Welcome to the Taco Podcast. This is Crystal. I'm Will. You're the audience. Thank you for joining us today. Today, it's Mother's Day, and we'd like to welcome every, everyone out there who is mother, and for also those who may be, you know, filling in as grandmother to children again, or single fathers who are raising children themselves. I hope you're having a wonderful day today and you're staying safe out there. So Mother's Day. Mother's Day. Have you uh, uh, looked into how Mother's Day is celebrated around the world? I have. And how, how do you celebrate Mother's Day? Uh, I celebrated Mother's Day, Mother's Day today. A uh, good friend of mine basically grew up together, made breakfast, my husband and him. Uh, well, you were there, <laughs> and my husband and, and a good friend of mine went shopping, made breakfast, and tended to the house, helped me uh, rearrange, put my new desk up, looks amazing, and then let me sit on my ass and play Fallout 4 for uh, a number of hours. So that was an amazing Mother's Day. Okay. <laughs> my, what what about time? mothers around the world? Have you, have you looked at how <laughs> they celebrate today? I haven't, Bill. Well, I pulled up an interesting article. Let's read it. 10 different ways that Mother's Day uh, traditions from around the world. In the United Kingdom, UK, Mother, Mother's Day is celebrated on the fourth Sunday of Lent. It is called the Mothering Sunday. Uh, during medieval times, poor families often sent their children off to work as domestic servants. To a, a, Wow. Uh, that doesn't sound great, but I guess it gives mom a break, right? That's right. Get out of my house. <laughs> Get out of my house. Here, send them off to some rich people to be servants for the day. Uh, their rare free day was traditionally uh, granted uh, during Lent season, so they would worship the Virgin Mary and visit their home, the Mother Church. Hmm. The children would often pick flowers to give to their mothers and bake special cakes called mothering cakes or seminal cakes. The holiday even used to be known as Refreshment Sunday because the strict Lent fasting rules were put aside for the holiday. Wow. Hey, Mom. Here's some flowers. Thanks for making me an indentured servant. In Brazil, Mother, Mother's Day is often the most commercial holiday celebrated, second only to Christmas. Uh, Brazil um, commemorates uh, this special day on the second Sunday of, in May with special children's performances, church gatherings, which often culminate in large multi-generational barbecues. Mm, I love me some barbecues. Yeah. Want to read Germany's? Muttertag pl takes place on the second Sunday in May. So that actually literally means Mother's Day, Muttertag unless it falls on Pentecost, in which case it occurs the first Sunday of the month. In Germany, the giving of Mother's Day cards is extremely popular. During World War II, Mother's Day traditions took on political significance as the day to acknowledge women for producing children for the fatherland. Oh my Jesus. Oh, lovely. Of course it did. Medals were awarded in gold, silver, or bronze based on how many children were in the household. Oh my God, gravy. After the word assumed a softer feel with the giving of <laughs> gifts, cards, and flowers, as well as festive meals. Oh, a medal for how many kids you had? I mean, honestly. Well, that's what it says. I'm not going to lie. Dur I, during World War II in Germany. I'm, I'm, I'm not mean, a person who can handle a, a ton of kids. In fact, when we, when we had our first, uh, my sister-in-law, my, my niece is uh, three days older than my daughter. Um, yeah, because she decided to go have the baby a day Right, we were supposed to have our babies a day. Like, we can't, first. we can't do. Um, so, and then my <laughs> sister-in-law had uh, my nephew, and I would occasionally babysit for them. And um, yeah, I'm pretty much a one kid at a time person because if I had more than two children in my house, I just had no idea what was happening at, at all. So uh, I could see definitely. I mean. Um, it takes a strong individual to handle more than one kid, in my opinion. And I am not that person. You have two in there right now. Yeah, they're in there and I'm in here. Uh, in Japan, um, American born, uh, Gris, how do you pronounce it? Gris Los? Los? Gris Los? I, Gris Los? I don't know. I don't. Um, yeah, right. 
That's uh, not Japanese, I don't think. They don't spent five years uh, raising their own children in Japan, where Mother's Day is celebrated as the second Sunday in May, and is symbolized by beautiful uh, carnations, which represent the gentle strength of mothers who um, are revered in Japanese culture. Children draw pictures of their mothers in school and sometimes enter them in art contests. Like most other countries, Mother's Day is a Mother's Day is a day of pampering for moms. Kids help take over household chores, have a special family meal like sushi or eggs, and give their mothers red carnations or roses and cards. Mm, I'm not a big sushi fan. Well, sushi or eggs or fish. I can, I, I like deviled eggs. I love deviled eggs. Not a big fan. Uh, of so I'm skipping through some of these. We don't we don't want to do all of them. Uh, Peru's interesting. Peru children often give their mothers handmade items, which are. It's a good thing that the, if that our um the people watching can't read this. <laughs> I like it, 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 it. Peru's indigenous Andean population celebrates the gifts of Mother Earth or Pachamama. I hope I did that justice. In early August, Pachamama is an ancient mythological goddess believed beloved by many indigenous Andean populations. Mythology cites Pachamala as the cause of earthquakes and the bringer of fertility. Her special worship day is called Martis de Chala. Huh. I have noticed this in a lot of cultures, is that their strong female deities are often uh, both givers of life and forces of destruction. In fact, in a lot of cultures, their death entity is not male, but female. I believe that. Mm -hmm. That the female <laughs> death entity is female. Mm-hmm. <laughs> If I'm going to die, it's going to be her. In case anything happens to me. <laughs> no. I, well, so back to how America, um, you know, here in, the, in America, how we generally celebrate a uh, holiday, you know, Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. It's a, a, a lot of people who, uh, I guess in the, for lack of better terms, um, call it a commercialized holiday. And I agree, but in fairness, a lot of holidays in American culture all are, are commercialized. Uh, we do worship the mighty dollar, and people are always trying to fish around to get more of it. Well, but, at, at the sake of even of human health, mm, you know, we're we're going to reopen the economy and put hundreds of thousands of people at risk who don't need to be, just so we can get the economy rolling again, so we can earn that dollar. Because mm -hmm. that's who we all are. We're just a bunch of greedy bastards. Right? I mean, that's what the media tells me. You know, I do occasionally think that most people are greedy bastards, but then I also think that given, I think, I think people and probably definitely Americans are stifled. I think there's, I think there's really a good heart to most people and it just gets stifled. I, I, I don't think that most, most Americans have, um, bad intentions mm -hmm. uh, i mean we yeah sure we want to get back to work we need to earn money we have to pay for food we have to pay for medical we you have to raise eat. our families yeah we have to provide for ourselves we're taught that as you know, as a young child you know that as you when you grow older you get a job and you provide for your family and these are all good and they're great you know intentions but we're in an uncharted territory right now we've i mean even during the 19 the what was 1908 when they, um, the Spanish flu, was it 1908? Sorry, 1918? Early 1900s. Not, uh, early 1900s, whatever it was, 1908, 1918, whatever. Whatever it was, I'm sure somebody will correct me in the comment section, because they always do. But when it comes to, you know, besides that, I mean, we, we locked down the country for that. And then when the soldiers start coming home, and we started having these large ticker tape parades. That's when we saw an, an eruption, a second wave, which you know killed far more than the first wave. Mm. But because we we said, well, you know, we we have to get get back to work. We have to do you know build the economy. We need to recover from what took place during the war. So you know, we're basically if his if you don't learn from history, you're doomed to repeat it. And we obviously didn't learn anything from history because we're doing it again. We're going to go right back down the same rabbit hole that we were in before. 
Mm. And it, I don't care what side of the political aisle you're on. It, it has nothing to do with politics. It has to do with, you know, general health of, of the population. You know, it shouldn't have anything to do with politics, but unfortunately it does. There is a political divide in all things in our country. Well, even that. That's the world we live in, though. But, it, I mean, I really don't, again, I don't think there's a bad intention of um, people in, in, in America as a whole. I mean, but, um, so, it, it, why, why do you think that, uh, you know, Mother's Day is um, revered more and we pay more uh, uh, attention to Mother's Day than, say, oh, Father's Day? I have some, I have some hypotheses on that. Okay, let's hear it. I think there's a bias against fathers in our community. Uh, there is. Worldwide. Maybe not necessarily <laughs> world, worldwide, but there is a sexist bias against men. There's this idea that women have to be caregivers to children. And a lot of men in our society are relegated to a role where they're not seen as being able to be nurturing or to be good parents. Um, it's not fair. Now, granted, men and women as a general rule, do parent differently. Men, as a general rule, tend to allow... Parent correctly, and, and mothers don't. Don't make me fun. <laughs> <laughs> tend to be a little more lax, allow their children more risk-taking behavior, and things like that. And that is not inherently wrong. There's nothing wrong with having different parenting styles. And children, in my opinion, need to know that and and being exposed to do different parenting styles by parents who love them and care about them equally is actually good because it helps early reinforcement to children knowing that everybody is different and that that's okay and children should be allowed some risk-taking behavior i absolutely will not allow my son to jump off of the swing set well, because it scares the crap out of me. Well, yeah, but, but... I mean, he, he, he'll only do it once, <laughs> you know, and it, you know, if he gets hurt, he'll, he won't do it again. Yeah, and like I said, generally men and women do parent differently, but those differences in parenting are not wrong. They may be wrong for a given situation. Everything is situational. Uh, there may be cultural differences and stuff like that, and maybe some people honestly are just incompatible as co-parents. Definitely something you should think about. Well, some people you are you know, incompatible to be parents, period. I mean, or, yeah, but, I don't know. I, I just, so you think that uh, there's a bias when it comes to fathers and Father's Day versus mothers. Yes. Mother's Day, we, we, you know, we pamper you know, and take care of the mothers. Father's Day, as, as a general rule, um, I don't, I can't speak for other um, fathers out there. But I end up working all day um, and then barbecuing or something for the, you know, the entire family and then cleaning up after the entire mess. Well, now in my defense, I asked you last Father's Day uh, what you wanted to do because I'd planned on taking the kids out for the day so you could do whatever. And you asked me to keep the kids home because you want to hang out with them. And then Elizabeth wanted you to cook. Yeah, so well, that's your fault. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, that was a different situation because I had I've been working and hadn't seen them. Yeah. But um. So now you do often wind I up. I mean, yeah. That's just I know, I know other people that are out there. I mean, you guys don't go out and buy me flowers on Father's Day. I did. Want I mean, I, I do buy. I do get you know cheap cologne and you know and I have belt. literally never bought you cheap cologne. <laughs> no, our daughter does. Yeah, it's always like Stetson or some some. Oh my God, she's never bought you Stetson. Yeah, it is. It's it's really bad. No, you should check out what we got him for Father's Day last year. It's fucking awesome. What it's was a that? Socks. Oh yeah, I, yeah, socks. They have the With my daughter's face on. Them. <laughs> yeah, my, uh, my daughter's face embroidered all over in the socks. Father's Day is coming up. You can find it at DivvyUp.com. That's can... not a paid promotion. It's not a paid promotion. It's you just... have to definitely awesome. say that, otherwise you you are. Um, Oh, we're yeah. going to get our bus no, it's, in trouble. It's, it's not a paid promotion. I just love the fact that, yeah, you just, uh, and you don't have to do a lot of cropping either. I just, I literally sent them uh, a picture of both my kids and they cropped their faces out just about perfectly and put them on socks. And now he has to wear the kids when he goes out golfing. I do. I, I, I didn't wear them at least once a year. We made sure to get them in his golf color. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was last year. Oh, how they're going to top it this year. Now, see, a couple years back, uh, ooh, eight years, eight years ago? Yeah, I know. Nothing happened. Eight years ago, uh, I got a lovely, 
lilac from Mother's Day. I absolutely love lilacs. I think they're, I love the way they smell, I love the way they look. I absolutely love them. I got this lovely lilac, beautiful lilac from Mother's Day. We planted it out in front of our house. Well, we have since sold that house. Um, I dug it up. <laughs> I dug it up and then transplanted it at the next house. And at the next house, it, by the time we sold that house, it grew way <laughs> too big to dig up. Yeah, yeah. So I had asked the guy who sold it. He said he wasn't sure when we sold the house what he was going to do with the lilac. And I'm like, this is my number. It's still there. If you're going to get rid of it, call me. That yeah. was my Mother's Day lilac. Yeah, it's still there. It, it's not a, not a lilac bush anymore. It's more of a tree. Yeah, it's huge. But, yeah, well... But this year, I mean, I didn't, I couldn't get a lilac. I mean, I went, me and the, um, your son went everywhere looking for a lilac, and no one had one. So I bought a, a flowering um, birch. I think it's a willow, isn't it? Will, yeah, w w flowering willow. Very really pretty. cool. Really cool plant. I've never seen one like it. It's, it's got to be something that they made in a lab somewhere. It's probably, you know, genetically engineered. It's going to attack us in our sleep or something. Cool, it's not a tap plant. Yeah, it's, it's going to be its own sci-fi movie. All right, so mothers are um, are better than fathers, and you guys get really cool stuff, and we get nothing. So, <laughs> moving on to that same topic, there is nobody who is worse to a mother than another mother. Women what? have a tendency to shit all over each other. Competitive parenting is an absolute freaking disease in our society. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. I thought the worst, the worst thing to, to mothers is, would be, you know, a father or the children. Yeah, no, they're pretty bad. No, they're, they're, they're bad, but not in the same way as competitive mothers. There is a big problem with, uh, with a number of things. You get crapped on if you've had a C-section get crapped on if you use formula if you had an epidural if you don't wear your kids where it's a thing you take the baby you put in the carrier oh you know. i'm like oh my god I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not skidding my son and wearing them like you know Ew, buffalo no. bill you know from silence of the lambs oh my god so <laughs> you know those first couple of months after taco was born when he was basically like right here all the time well he's kind of like that every day now yeah for you, yeah, so you take all the snuggles. I get all the snuggles, all the snuggles. All the snuggles. That's that's baby wearing. Your kid is basically right here all the time. And during the day, you know, he he's on me, mm -hmm. on my back, a lot, jumping on me, hopping on me. Hop on pop is a real book. It's a, it's based after life events. I'm convinced of it. I'm never reading him that book again because it's the, as soon as I read that to him. He looked at the page, looked at the pictures, and said, hmm, I'm going to crush daddy. <laughs> so, but that's for a different uh, podcast. That's for Father's Day. We'll talk about that one again. So, <laughs> Mother's Day. Yeah. Well, uh, we've got a lovely cartoon we'll be putting a link to. And um, an interesting segue uh, it, that Crystal um, wants to put a link to in the description to the Fed is Best Foundation. And could you tell the, the audience a little bit about the Fed Best Foundation? And this is not a paid um, place ad placement. It's something that we support, but it is not something that we are paid to actually place in the description or anything at all. We get nothing from this. So now please go ahead. Yes, so the Fed is Best Foundation is one of the three charities that I support. Bat Conservation International, I am a member of the Xerces Society for the Conservation of Invertebrates, and I support the Fed is Best Foundation. Uh, the What's Fed the is third? The Bat Conservation International. One. The Xerces Society for oh, the Conservation oh, okay. of Invertebrates. Oh, I, I missed the Mrs. Xerces Society. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, that's two. Bats and, bats and boobies. Bats, and, <laughs> bats, bugs, and boobies. Bats, bugs, and boobies. Oh, three Bs. Uh, yes, yeah, bats, bugs, mm. and boobies. Um, so the Venice Best Foundation uh, exists to help support women regardless of their feeding preferences or needs. Um, in the cartoon that we're going to post from a lovely cartoonist, uh, Cartoons by Kristen, she does great work. She's the one that did our the podcast, uh, you know, the cartoon of me and her for the podcast um, 
opening you see there? You'll notice in the cartoon, there's uh, numerous different moms, lost moms, rainbow moms, angel moms. There's also two be moms. Um, and I'm going to take a little bit to talk about tube feeding. It's something that's often left out of the discussion when people talk about infant feeding. Usually people talk about breastfeeding or formula feeding. Tube feeding often gets left out of the conversation. Tube feeding is when baby's unable to take food by mouth and the baby is fed via tube. Um, oftentimes it's directly in the stomach, goes directly into the stomach. Can I get one of those? You may not. Oh. <laughs> Anyway, put the bacon right in my belly. Yeah, but go ahead. Bacon break me belly. <laughs> Anyways, yes, tube feeding parents often get left out of the conversation when we're discussing safe infant feeding. And safe infant feeding is probably even more paramount for these families mm. uh, because they don't have as many choices as other parents do when it comes to feeding options. There's not a whole lot of resources for them. So I would like to just give a little shout out to those moms. You make the best of a bad situation and there's not a lot of support for you. And we're here for you and we see you and we appreciate you and so do your kiddos. Happy Mother's Day. And we're, we're going to put a link to um, Art by Kristen. Mm -hmm. We're going to put a link to, to Cartoons her, by Kristen. her uh, poster. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then. Because uh, uh, you know, I don't want to just post it in, in, you know, in the background where people aren't going to be able to click on it. We'll put a link to her Facebook it. page. Yeah. yeah. Link it to her Facebook page, you know, yeah. where you can see the. But the Fed is Best Foundation, foundation uh, was founded by uh, uh, a doctor and an RN. And Who is this doctor? Is that a chiropractic doctor? No. No? No. She's okay. an emergency room physician. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, who I believe also specializes in neurology now. Mm. I believe that's something that happened after something that she focused her education on after her son was injured. Her son was injured um, by feeding complications. She was breastfeeding her son. He wasn't getting enough food to eat. She repeatedly saw lots of different providers and was told the same thing that a lot of women are told. Everything's fine. Just keep going. Everything's fine. Just keep going. And it wasn't. Her, her son suffered some permanent harm. So their, their foundation exists to help parents, regardless of their feeding choices, help feed their infants safely. And that's something that's very important. And you, you don't have to give to the foundation. You mm -hmm. can go there and learn and use as a resource for multitudes of different things when it comes to parenting. So, you know, keep it, keep in mind, nobody's looking for a handout. Yeah, yes, there is a donation side of it, but you can, it's a great resource. Yeah. They've got plenty of resources. Um, they're there, they're available to help out. If you know somebody who's struggling with feeding, regardless of how they feed, there's a support group. Uh, there's mm -hmm. international board certified lactation consultants who are there, who are available to help oftentimes free of charge. They will help. Um, now granted, Access is limited, you know, they don't, we don't have an unlimited supply of people available to assist, but, you know, yeah. there's people there who are willing. Cool. And there's a big lay community of people who are willing to offer support as well. All right. Um, so do you have a, a message that you'd like to give to all the mothers out there who may be watching this today? Any words of wisdom on mental health and how to how to survive a, a husband who's kind of a jerk and some kids that are awesome but or whatever you know whatever your, your message might be i mean just just, I'm just, there. just throwing that out right? <laughs> just at the top and like it just came to you bubble bath a couple of bottles of wine and a box of chocolates you know pamper yourself anything you do you yeah. Do you. Do be you. you. What makes you yeah. happy? Yeah. Do that. You know, don't and kill don't... your husband, though. Please. Otherwise, I'll have to cover that on my other channel. And I don't want to, really. Yeah, There's enough feel, of that out there right now. Don't feel bad about doing what you need to do to keep yourself sane and to keep yourself happy. And not just on Mother's Day. Yeah. All year long. What your children need is a happy and healthy mother. This is true. Do what you need to do to be happy and to stay healthy. Yes. Okay. Um, and um, so in closing, I would like, there is a YouTube creator. Her name is, she goes by the channel name, uh, Mommy Ramblings. Mm -hmm. um, and Mommy Ramblings uh, lost her son tragically the other day. And I just want to give a shout out to Mommy Ramblings and to all her supporters and viewers of her channel and content. 
and I know it's it, she's going through a very difficult time right now with the loss of her son. But you know, our hearts are and our minds are with you right now. So please you know, take care of yourself. Don't rush back to your channel. There's more important things like your own mental health and your families. Take care of yourself. Okay. I'm sorry to hear that. I know it's tragic, but you know. I don't know. I was telling people on live stream and I, I don't know what I would do if I lost one of the, or two, you know, our two children. And it is, it's sad. It's very sad. So, all right. Anything else? You guys have a great Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. And thank you for joining us today.